Hi, good evening. I'm Shane Jones with the Lime Sports World. Barbados are out of the FIFA World Cup 2014 qualifiers. This after losing their third straight game of the first round this evening at the National Stadium. This was the return game against Ghana after losing last month. The score once again was 2-0 just as it was in the first leg with Anthony Abrahams and Christopher Nurse both scoring in the second half. Although Guyana is in a commanding position in the sense of topping the group, they know that their competition right now in a sense is Trinidad. As they come forward again, goal score from the first, great cross, and a Fairburn, Fairburn has scored. As Keith Fairburn predicted, he's come on to great effect. The whole solid and composed and strong. Moise plays it inside to boys. Boys, even boys have got in the wrong mood too. Here they go again, the Guineas. Leading ball, down the left. This is danger. This is goal number two. The goal number two. And Ghana has scored. They have ripped Barbados apart. And sure enough, it's all over. Cricket News Now. Chris Gale's Royal Challengers Bangalore completed a sensational six-wicket win over New South Wales Blues in the semi-finals of the Champions League T20 today in India. The Blues seemingly had the game in the bag after a world win 68 ball 123 from David Warner, which was part of a 146-run partnership with Daniel Smith, who made 62, as they posted 203 for two after being sent into bat. But Bangalore replied heroically through Chris Gill's 92 of 41 deliveries and Virat Kohli's 84, reaching 204 for four with nine balls to spear. Did well to reach that Dave Warner and he's got it away to the boundary. Well, it's the 23rd boundary uh, in this tournament, 23rd four. Beautifully hit. Cleared point essence. Oh, has that got enough? Yes, it has. Another six for Warner. Partly struck. It's too simple for him. Oh, he's hit it over the infield. That'll be a boundary. Oh, he's out. Smashed it. Blast the ball for him. He might well have said, I'd rather go with Goli than uh, Gail. Not anymore. There's a man in the deep, but he's too fine. Now the other side is squaling. Where does he step? of the over. Oh, he can play a gentle shot too. Boundary. Yes, there's a place in the finals at stake. He's hit it up in the air. That's going to be a six as well. He does play that shot over extra cover. That's up in the air, but is it going to be a catch? Oh, ho, ho, what an effort. What an effort. That is huge. That is out of the ground. He's given him out. And this. Oh, he's got it over the infield. What are they talking about here? Just over cover. There's a fielder there, and he just pushes it over for four. And third man is up inside the circle. Which he does. First bounce into the boundary. Mohamed Kaif gets into the act now, only four needed. This is incredible. Kaif goes for it. And that's four. The Royal Challengers are in the final. Twice in two days, they've chased down 200. Twice in two days, we've seen some incredible cricket here. Well, tomorrow's second semi-final is between Karen Pollard's Mumbai Indians and Somerset, live on MCTV's ESPN from 10.30 a.m. Still with cricket, Ravi Rampal took a four-wicket haul as the West Indies got off 
to a winning start on their tour of Bangladesh today. The Windies beat the Bangladesh Cricket Board's 11 by 65 runs in a 45 overs aside encounter. Scores Windies 217 for 9 in their 45 overs. The BCB 11 152, Rampal 4 for 23. Meanwhile, West Indies under 19s lost their fifth match today of their quadrangular series in India. The Windies under 19s went down by 81 runs to India. Scores India under 19s 249 for 7 in their 50 overs. Windies under 19s 168 in 40.5. The Young Windies will play Australia under 19s for the third place on Sunday. British American Insurance Jackson and Act 2 Popcorn Clapham Bulls are just one game away from a date in the finals of the BABA's Premier League. Jackson went one up in their best of three semi final series against the Lumber Company Lakers, while Bulls got the jump on First Works Warriors last night at the Garfield Sobers Gymnasium. Here's Marsha Boyce. Game one of the semi final playoffs, Lakers in blue up against Jackson. Adrian Allman would be one of the leading scorers for the Lakers. Here pulling up for the jumper, he had 16 points in the game. The Lakers were up 22-12 at the end of the first quarter and only increased their lead in the second. Andre Lockhart sinking the three. They dominated proceedings in the first half and would take an 18-point lead into the break, 39-21. But this wasn't going to be a blowout in favor of the men in blue. Pearson Griffith picking up two of his 13 for Jackson. He also had 10 rebounds. LeVar Graves with the steal and Peter Allen going all the way. By this stage, you definitely felt a shift in momentum in favor of Jackson. Kevin Austin, two of his 10. Jackson would actually outscore the Lakers 24-5 to lead by one point, 45-44, heading into the fourth. Here's where things got even more interesting. Neither side wanting to give an edge, Graves getting two of his 12. At the other end, Lockhart. He scored a team-high 16 points, Lakers led by three at one stage. Jackson would manage to level the score at 58 all. Now with less than two minutes to go, Allman was fouled by Manuel Allen, and he would score all three from the line to put Lakers ahead by two. Jackson would again draw level at 65, courtesy of Austin's jumper. Adding more drama, Alain drew the foul going for the rebound with 1.9 seconds left on the clock. He had already scored a team high 16 points, but this was the shot that mattered. Jackson up by one. Lakers, not enough time before the final buzzer. It's Jackson 66, Lakers 65. Game one of the other semi-final series, Bulls versus Warriors, was another close encounter. It was almost a battle between Warriors Corey McDonald and Jeremy Gill of Bulls. Here's Gill a bit lucky on this occasion, but Warriors dominated the early stages. McDonald for two of his 18. They led 16-10 at the end of the first quarter. Gill would pick up a game-high 19 points. He got good support from Halle Franklin. Here with the putback, he had 10 points and 10 rebounds. Trailing by three at halftime, Bulls would turn things around in the second half. They would go on to win the game by eight points, 62 to 56. Marsha Boyce, CBC Sports. Thanks, Marsha. Well, game two is set for tomorrow at the Barbados Community College. Switching sports now, Century Insurance Deacons and Chargers women followed the script to a T, winning their opening games of the 2011 Goddard's Enterprises Division I Volleyball League. Security Safe Carlton and Carefree Toners were the victims, both taking three straight losses. CBC's Melissa Farley reports. A similar color combination, but Chargers are the ones closer to the screen. And having wrapped up the first and second sets, 14-25, 22-25, we are into the third, and Chargers are still running the show. Well, the ladies on the opposite side got in on the act, going for the shot, a minor block, but eventually point to toners. Chargers, however, kept charging, and Tonya Joseph did what she does best. 24-14 to Chargers at this point, and with good teamwork, they took the third and final set, 25-14. This is now Deacons in yellow against Carlton. A competitive game as Carlton was not taken too lightly in the first set. However, they lost it 20-25. In the second, Deacons fought to keep control. Spike point goes to the ladies in yellow. But Carlton kept stepping to the plate. We can do what you can do. 
but when the dust settled, Deacon stuck the set by the same margin as the first, 25-20, and went on to take the third set, 25-10. Melissa Farley, CBC Sports. Back to cricket news now and Shamar Cook's Blue Devils defeated Dwayne Smith's Black Knights by 13 runs recently at Belleville in a 2020 encounter which brought the curtain down on the Garrison Secondary School's alumni sports extravaganza. Sent into bat, the Blue Devils made 154 for 7 from their allotted 20 overs. including 7 fours and 6. After offering some resistance. 